president of the Aboriginal Environmental Leadership Circle. The Aboriginal Environmental Leadership Circle, or ELSI, as we call it for short, is a not-for-profit organization um, that aims to promote and enhance environmental management in our Indigenous communities. Uh, we like to showcase the tools and resources that our communities are using to manage uh, our environment and the relationships associated with that. Um, so we really encourage a lot of environmental monitoring, environmental baseline data collection, as well as the integration of our knowledge and um, our practices to inform environmental solutions. And we also like to encourage um, land-based learning. Um, on the other side of that, I'm also the instructor for the Developing Indigenous Environmental Keepers Program, in, uh, which is a meaningful capacity development initiative. Uh, in which we're training 20 environmental keepers. In terms of the Aboriginal Environmental Leadership Circle, we measure the success by the amount of relationships that we develop and we try to promote. So um, trying to have various workshops on, you know, topics of interest to our communities related to the environment, um, as well as how many people are knowing of our organization and accessing information from our organization. From your perspective, what is Indigenous education? I think Indigenous education is um, a combination of many things. You know, some classroom learning where you learn, you know, the fundamentals of how to operate in, you know, today's society, while also including land-based learning components so that way we can understand and better figure out how to integrate our knowledge into um, solutions for our communities, whether that be in education, health, environment, whatever, right? So including our knowledges and our practices into these processes so that way um, our perspective is included. And Can you yeah. give an example of an activity? Yeah, so for example, you know, um, in the environmental industry, we're always doing, they say, water sampling, and we're taking, you know, water samples and we're sending them to the lab to get analysis done, but at the same time, as we're taking those samples, we should be, you know, doing an offering, saying why we're taking that sample, <laughs> doing a little prayer for the water that we're caring for there, and then maybe working towards, um, you know, having ceremony there, or right? So integrating our knowledge with some of the science stuff to care for that land. Um, yeah, so anyway, our programs, like, so for example, even the course that we're teaching here, our Indigenous Environmental Keepers, will have a lot of science-based learning so we learned all about you know, the flora the fauna but then we're also learning about how this resource management um, impacts our communities and how our knowledge can support some solutions for that okay. so do um, integrate elders as much as we can yep yeah, definitely have some elders teachings try to include traditional knowledge as much as we can um, we're actually going to a traditional knowledge workshop um, next week well I am as part of um, the work that I do, but also bringing um, elders into the classroom, getting their guidance for our even program development, right? And then also really encouraging a lot of um, the language and integrating the language into our teaching. So we'll have Nishnabemo and Bingo, or um, when we're talking to our elders, if they can tell us how they use the land in the language, because the language is a lot more descriptive than our English language. So, you know, for example, like, are they calling it Wolf Mountain? Or are they saying, oh, that's the area where we camp and hunt during the summertime, you know? So when you say it in the language, it's often a lot more like, that's the place where we did this at the winter time or whatnot, right? So, so this will be um, up until, I believe, the end of August. So it kind of started in September-ish. This has been one year. So they've been in class learning. This semester we're learning a lot more Indigenous resource management. And then come April they'll be going all on their placements. Okay, good. okay so is there, um, what is your vision? Definitely to make sure that it's accessible to all of our people, that all of our people who want to pursue education have the ability and opportunity to do so. Making sure that the, these spaces where our people are going to learn have, you know, culturally comfortable spaces for us to learn, right? So, you know, do we have forums, like rooms where we can gather and share, have food, have ceremony, access to elders, you know, um, 
ways to connect our members to their community. Sometimes some of our people travel great distances to go to school and kind of, you know, feel disconnected. So how do we support them and ensure that they have everything they need to succeed in the academic environment, right? While also providing them a little bit of opportunity to feel still connected to home. Okay, is there anything else you would like to add? I think just ensuring that, you know, we have like programs in place in our institutions to support our people. Like, are they recognizing when, you know, we're gone for 10 days because we're out at hunt camp, right? And how does that impact their studies, right? And do their teachers know about those things, right? Or even say, you know, we have a death in our community, like that takes certain time away from our studies and are they receptive to those things? And is there opportunities to include some of that, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah.